In this video, I'm going to talk about vitamin B4. And so if you look at most lists of the v B vitamins, you'll see that it, it has B1 and B2 and B3. And then usually they'll skip right to B5. Uh, and so it's, you might wonder what is considered B4. And there are two molecules that are sometimes classified as vitamin B4. The first one is choline, and the second one is carnitine. So you may have heard of these two molecules. So choline is uh, what's necessary for acetylcholine, which is a, a neurotransmitter. And it's also in uh, phosphatidyl, uh choline, which is a, a type of pho uh, phospholipid. And you may have heard of carnitine because you can get it as a supplement. Uh, so you might have heard it as, as things like L-carnitine in supplement form, which the L just telling you what the stereochemistry of it is but it's this molecule. So it's essentially the same as choline, except that it has this, these extra atoms on the molecule, this uh, carboxylic acid and this extra carbon here. Uh, but they're both biosynthesized in different ways. Uh, by the way, just to clarify this shows this X here that's the counter anion uh, because this has positively charged there there needs to be a negatively charged ion and X just means it could be uh, something else possibly a chloride ion or, or something like that the same would go for the carnitine this image I took just didn't uh, just didn't show that but that's what that means uh, and so these are both biosynthesized in different ways. I'm not going to go in painstaking detail on their biosynthesis like I have been because, th well, I, I probably would not consider these B vitamins because B vitamins are used as cofactors or, or for the product, the precursors of cofactors which are used in enzymes. These two molecules are are not that and so to me it, it's kind of it doesn't really seem like these ought to be considered B vitamins and that's probably why they often are not but if, if anybody talks about vitamin B4 it's these two molecules that are considered the vitamin B4. And so choline is biosynthesized from L-serine, which is an amino acid. And uh, what it does is it just decarboxylates it, and we end up with this ethanolamine, and then using s methionine. So we've seen that in previous videos. It just methylates this nitrogen three times so that we end up with this trimethyl nitrogen here. And so that's how choline is made. And so choline is something that can be made in humans, but it is not made in large enough quantities. So we do need to uh, have, have our diet, uh, have some of this in our diet. And I'll quickly go through a couple of things that choline is used for us. So the first one is is homocysteine, uh, homocysteine homos, homeostasis. And so uh, one way that this is done is through folate, which we will talk about in a later video. This is also one of the B vitamins. Uh, it, but it can also be done through this way. This uh, choline is, is turned into uh, betaine. And so that is just uh, oxidizing the the hydroxyl group on it. It's oxidizing this so that it turns it into this carboxylic acid. And then the homocysteine can, um, 
can remove a methyl group from this. So this is the betaine right here. So it'll remove a methyl group from it and that turns it into dimethylglycine because this is essentially just a, this is, this has a fancy name, betaine, but it's just trimethylglycine, which is, uh, glycine is an amino acid. And the other thing that, uh, so the biggest thing that it would be used for in the human body is as this uh, this phosphatidylcholine. So this is uh, a fatty acid. Well, these are two fatty acids bound to this glycerol. So it's a diglycerol or a diglyceride. And then it has this choline on it. So it has this, well, it has this phosphate as well, but then it, has this choline bound to that. And this is found in in uh, these diglycerides, which are found in cellular membranes. And down here I have the distribution of these of these uh, fatty of is these uh, diglycerols, these diglycerides in the membranes of of cells. So the outer layer and the inner layer are shown here. And this, uh, it might be a little hard to see, but this in yellow is the phosphatidyl serine. And this in blue is the phosphatidyl choline. Uh, and this is the phosphatidyl, uh, the phosphatidyl ethanolamine, which is uh, shown right here. Uh, SM, um, I'm not sure what that is. This doesn't show uh, phosphatidyl inositol, which is this one right here. Oops, it has this uh, this inositol group bound to it in the same place that the uh, that the phosphatidyl choline would be bound onto that phosphate, and we will run into this more in future videos when we get into things like cell signaling and so forth. But the thing to notice here is that the uh, phosphatidyl uh, choline has uh, has more presence in the outer membrane than in the inner membrane. And over here, it actually shows the distribution of these fatty acids in cancer. And we see that they kind of equalize uh, between the two layers of the phospholipid bilayer. And so in healthy cells, the, these are sort of distributed unevenly between the two layers. And that's important for maintaining the uh, the the uh, function of the phospholipid bilayer. And so that is one of the main things that choline is used for. So now we'll talk about carnitine, which is the other candidate as vitamin B for. And so like I said, this is biosynthesized differently than than the choline. So this actually starts it back here at this uh, with lysine inside of, well, as a, an amino acid residue in a protein. So there'd be uh, lots of protein going away from this. Uh, and then this shows that this uh, lysine is being methylated. So that's how we end up with our, our trimethyl nitrogen here, which is the, one of the things that this has in common with the choline here. And then this shows that uh, this undergoes protein degradation so that you end up with this, uh, this uh, trimethyl lysine here. Uh, and then uh, this uh, 2-oxoglutarate or alpha-ketoglutarate or whatever you want to call it, which comes from, uh, from the tricarboxylic acid cycle, so the TCA cycle. Uh, it's an intermediate in that cycle, it comes in here uh, along with oxygen. And then we end up with this species here, which uh, now has this, um, this hydroxyl group uh, bound to it. Um, well, it also, so it, it's adding this uh, two oxoglutarate. So we end up increasing the, uh, no, that's, that's not increasing. So we have three here, this has a four here, and then this is just showing this other carbon here with the hydroxyl group. Uh, and then this, uh, then this glycine is 
released from it. And so we are losing, we are losing that from it. So this is the glycine here. And uh, we end up with this aldehyde here, this uh, trimethyl uh, amino aldehyde, which has this, this aldehyde group here. Uh, that becomes oxidized so that we end up with this uh, 4N trimethyl amino butyrate uh, or gamma uh, butyrobetane here. Uh, and then we have another oxygen and oxoketoglutarate come in and we end up with this uh, L-carnitine here, which we can see is is this species up here. So it has that, that hydroxyl group here and the carboxylic acid and the uh, trimethylated uh, amine group here. And so this paper, uh, so it, has, it shows these uh, enzymes here with the vitamin C crossed out because the paper was showing that, that uh, the, the vitamin C is unnecessary for these enzymes to function. It was thought for quite a while that these enzymes required vitamin C and the paper I took this figure from showed that they are not necessary, that this can still be synthesized without vitamin C being present. So that's why those are there. But we see that we still need these, these iron cofactors on them and this needs uh, the NAD plus, which is reduced to NAD, uh, NADH uh, as it oxidizes this aldehyde to this uh, carboxylate here. And so carnitine is used uh, for the transport of fatty acids and in particular long chain fatty acids. So fatty acids that have a lot of carbons in them uh, they're, they're, it's used to transport them into the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, if you will. And so uh, we see here that we have these fatty acids, this uh, acyl-CoA synthetase will, uh, will then bind it to uh, acetyl-CoA, uh, and then carnitine will bind to that, and then this CPT1 uh, can bring the acyl-carnitine, which is just a carnitine bound to a, a fatty acid uh, into the the space between the the mitochondrial membrane. So in this intermembrane space, uh, then we have this carnitine uh, acyl carnitine translocase, which can take this uh, carnitine fatty acid into the uh, the mitochondrial matrix. So inside the mitochondria, then we have the CPT2, which uh, removes the um, the uh, the fatty acid from the carnitine. The carnitine can then uh, be moved back out into the cytosol, where the uh, fatty acid goes into beta oxidation uh, and so forth. Uh, the TCA cycle. So we'll get into all this kind of stuff in very very painstaking detail in later videos. So. I'm not going to go into it here, but this is for energy production because, as I said, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, uh, if you will. Uh, so, yeah, the, the carnitine is required for transporting long-chain fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria so that they can be broken down and turned into energy, which is why carnitine is also is oftentimes thought of as, as something that increases energy because it's needed, as I said, for bringing long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria in order to generate energy through beta oxidation and the uh, TCA cycle. Uh, anyway, that is all I wanted to talk about for these two molecules. We'll run into them. Uh, more later on and get uh, more into the nitty-gritty of how they work. Uh, but I just, I thought for completeness sake, I ought to say a little something about them during these vitamin B videos. And so that is what I did. I will see you in another video.